Your reaction, firstly, to the news of these advanced talks um, with the government to put £500 million into the steelworks? Well, of course, any investment in our steel industry is very welcome, and the Patolbert Steelworks in my Aberavon constituency is the beating heart of our economy uh, and of our uh, community. Uh, these talks are, have been dragging on for a very long time. Uh, the assets in the Patolbert Steelworks, some of them are ageing and reaching the end of their life cycle, so there is real urgency in getting these talks over the line and getting the deal done. But I have to say that some of the briefing I've seen seems to be talking very much just about electric arc furnaces. But there are many technologies that can provide that route to decarbonisation for the steel industry, such as hydrogen, such as direct reduced iron, such as carbon capture and storage. And it would be a terrible mistake if uh, the only focus of this uh, transition to green steel making was electric arc furnaces, because electric arc furnaces can't make all of the qualities and grades of steel that are required if you want to keep your customer base going and, of course, keep as many jobs as possible in the industry. So I, I think that the trade unions have made it absolutely clear to the government and to Tata Steel that they have to be in, involved, included, consulted, and you cannot move forward uh, on it in any way without the full support of the workforce. And well, I do hope that the sound. government and Tata Steel are listening to those messages. It doesn't sound, does it, like there's any guarantee about the jobs there? Well, of course, uh, it, it change uh, does lead to disruption, and there may well be at some point some job losses. But what would be completely unacceptable is if uh, that's a result of a failure to get a full spectrum strategy around the different types of uh, technology that you need uh, to move to greener steelmaking. Uh, and if they only focus on electric arc furnaces, if you, if you like, if they, if they put all of their eggs in that basket, then that will uh, lead to uh, more job losses and will make our steel industry less competitive. If you look at European governments uh, and in all of our main competitor countries, they're all investing in all kinds of different routes to decarbonisation. Electric arc furnaces, yes, but also hydrogen, direct reduced iron and carbon capture and storage. So let's, my plea to the government and Tata Steel is don't make British steel workers compete with one hand tied behind their backs again. Don't fail to make the investment that's required to ensure that we make that transition to a greener steel making, but whilst keeping our customer base and keeping our plants viable and competitive. If the outcome of this is still the loss of potentially thousands of jobs and the, the capacity to only make a small percentage of steel, um, is it worth more than a billion pounds worth of taxpayers' money? Well, imagine the cost of not doing anything, both in terms of the huge job losses that there would be, but also in terms of the impact on our climate change targets, because we need steel in this country. Are we going to import it from countries like China, which have very, very dirty and carbon intensive steel making processes? And just think about our national security. Do we really be, want to be a country that has to rely on other countries, often with quite hostile governments, uh, for making a foundation product like steel, which underpins everything in our economy, from the cars that we drive to the houses that we live in, the offices we work in. Uh, it, it is an absolutely vital foundational industry. And if, if we want growth in this country, if we want growth taking us forward into the 21st century, we need a modern, viable and competitive sovereign steel making capacity. Yeah, last year, steel production fell to its lowest level since the 1930s, the time of the Great Depression. Mm. Is, is there a chance that we could be being a little bit too sentimental about this notion of steel sovereignty? Quite the opposite. I think this is about facing the future and building a Britain that can stand more firmly on its own two feet going into uh, that future. And unfortunately, we've had 13 years of uh, a lack of support for our steel industry, a lack of support in terms of the transition to greener uh, processes, a lack of support in terms of energy costs, a lack of support in terms of strategic uh, procurement. And as a result, uh, other com European competitor countries in particular have been forging ahead and, um, and we're being left behind. So the government needs to stop 
uh, the dither and delay. It needs to recognise that we need a steel industry in this country and we need it to be built on uh, modern investment in the plant and production processes that are so vital, both in terms of hitting our uh, carbon reduction targets, but also in terms of protecting our national security and those really well-paid, high-value-added, high-skilled jobs uh, of the future. Steel is not a sunset industry. Steel is an industry of the future. So many of the grades and qualities of steel that are made now didn't even exist uh, 10 years ago. There's a huge amount of innovation uh, and technological uh, pro um, progress uh, in the steel industry. Uh, it's just a pity that for 13 years we've, have, we've had a government that hasn't recognised that and hasn't given us the support we need through a proper industrial strategy. Stephen Kennett, thank you for your time. Thank you.